Sovereign wealth funds have been long-standing used as an instrument for economic development. It has been created by nations which often have budget surpluses and uses that money to create newfound wealth which enables long-term growth and stability. Nations that are famous for using these are most notably from both commodity and reserve-rich countries. The success brought so far has been nothing but a miracle throughout the world. From Singapore's GIC to Temasek, which is one of the building blocks of Singapore's stable economy, Middle Eastern nations use these sovereign wealth funds to diversify their reliance on oil and gas and ensure long-term growth even in Europe. In Southeast Asia, on the other hand, the creation of a sovereign wealth fund is slowly being chased after. Singapore, Malaysia, Brunei, Vietnam, and Indonesia have all jumped into harnessing this opportunity. Their homegrown sovereign wealth funds have proved to be a massive benefit to the country. It led Singapore to own trillions of assets worldwide, Indonesia to lure in foreign investments, produce infrastructure after infrastructure, and so much more. However, some nations in Southeast Asia still do not possess a sovereign wealth fund, and as the title suggests, it is the Philippines, a country that has been stated to likewise have the potential in having its own sovereign wealth fund. However, until this very day, its pursuit of one is still lacking. Not until House Bill No. 6398 was introduced around the end of 2022, which sought to create the country's own sovereign wealth fund, a fund named the Maharlika Wealth Fund, which will have an initially invested equity of about 250 billion pesos, or around 5 billion US dollars. However, as of the time of this video's writing, this is so far a proposed plan, which means that there is a chance that it will not be signed into creation. If it did, however, just how much potential will this bring to the Philippines? Will they really garner such an opportunity as other nations? Well, let us understand all of these in more detail. Sovereign wealth funds are commonly established due to many factors. These factors range from a balance of payment surpluses to the privatization of state-owned enterprises to gross official international reserves and other surpluses and earnings from the government. These factors, as we just stated, are evident in the Philippines. It is a nation rich in mineral resources. The country has a significant deposit of gold, copper, nickel, gas, and oil, which are just among the many more mineral resources in its mining potential. With the world slowly revolutionizing the vehicle industry to favor more electricity, the country's nickel deposit is even becoming more important. One unfortunate factor was the Malampaya gas field and its fund, which garnered over 332 billion pesos in a total collection to the government since 2002, but due to corruption, some of its funds were misused along the way. Anyway, income from mineral sources is not the only way for a country to grow its wealth. Another factor for the Philippines could be its international reserves, which are approximately 94 billion dollars, attributed, in part, due to being fueled by the vast overseas Filipino workforce, which sends 30 to nearly 40 billion dollars of remittance annually back to their home country. Finally, we should not forget that throughout many decades, the government has also privatized many of its state-owned enterprises, which have also created some sort of wealth. These are just some of the reasons why the Philippines can develop its own sovereign wealth fund. The Maharlika Wealth Fund on the other hand, announced that it will receive its money from government-owned banks and social and insurance systems. We will go back to the conversations behind these government-backed businesses later on. For now, let us discuss more of the opportunities that may help improve the economy of the Philippines. First of all, sovereign wealth funds, as we noted earlier, are a way to diversify an economy, to take advantage of budget surpluses, or are sometimes used as a fashionable excuse. However, sovereign wealth funds can also do one thing help pursue development projects within a country's own domestic economy. Take, for example, Indonesia's Sovereign Wealth Fund, the Indonesian Investment Authority, or INA. The money it has gathered thus far was enormous at over $24.5 billion. 
It was established in 2021 and has so far enabled infrastructure developments around Indonesia, which sparked a new way for the country to have a new road, a new railway, or a new building. On the other hand, sovereign wealth funds could also diversify an economy. Middle Eastern countries rich in oil and natural gas have collectively gathered nearly trillions of dollars. They chose to invest this money by buying real estate around the world and investing in equities and bonds from foreign nations. This enabled them to have a more stable economy, especially during days when oil prices become volatile or even the probability that either oil and gas would be depleted. In many ways, and as simple as it is, sovereign wealth funds are aimed to increase the economy or wealth of one's nation further. Had the Philippines initialized its own sovereign wealth fund, it too would reap some benefits in using excess money and see an increase in wealth and growth. Probabilities that could have happened decades ago, from the likes of the Malampaya gas fund money to foreign reserves and even its social security system. To keep things short, had the Philippines pursued a sovereign wealth fund, it would have already collectively earned a lot of money through decades of solid investments as proven by many. So far, according to the public data base of the Senate website, the last time a sovereign wealth fund was introduced was known as Senate Bill No. 1212 back in 2016, and further bills totaled about five. Furthermore, sovereign wealth funds do not entirely need to be funded by the country's government. For example, domestic and international money jointly financed Indonesia's INA. This might be because Indonesia's own sovereign wealth fund is going to be used within its own economy. Now, this is because Indonesia's INA is strategically going to use this money to increase its economy. With so much opportunity for the Indonesian economy to grow, international capital will likely want to join in. Such a path is a massive potential for the Philippines as well. It can also set up its sovereign wealth fund with the help of big money overseas, as the archipelago nation itself is also rich in opportunities to stir domestic growth. Finally, one of the questions that we should raise is, why not? Having one is indeed good, but it doesn't mean that it will prove to be so for the Philippines. In cases of a country with political instability and corruption being rampant, the chances of a sovereign wealth fund being plundered is, unfortunately, terrifying. As many may or may not know, Malaysia, a country with a lesser corruption ranking, has even experienced this failed venture. Its notorious 1MDB, a sovereign wealth fund that initially promised many things, has recently brought billions of dollars in debt to Malaysia and its taxpayers. The exact opposite of what it was supposed to get. As of the latest report, Malaysia's 1MDB has outstanding debts of over $7.8 billion. Political instability is a recipe for disaster if it happens within the Philippines. This is one of the good cases why the Philippines should still not have its wealth fund, as the country needs to fix its government issues before implementing something that can have a risk such as this. This also might be why, despite years, even bills introduced by many senators have still been yet to pass into law. And we should not forget about what happened to the Malampaya Fund. While it was not a type of sovereign, it still showcased how vulnerable these are to political corruption. But while there are still Still no sovereign wealth funds as of yet, that does not mean the country has zero funds. Sovereign wealth funds are simply a pool of enormous money, which has the goal to increase that money. But the Philippines has many kinds of these funds. For instance, two of the most prominent ones are known as the Social Security System, or SSS, and the Government Service Insurance System, or GSIS. These two funds act just like sovereign wealth funds. They are a pool of enormous money, and the heads of these agencies use that money to invest, hoping that they could provide a more significant return. According to the Department of Finance, the GSIS alone holds over 1.53 trillion pesos, or nearly $27 billion worth of assets under management. The GSIS invests this money through different instruments, from currencies to fixed income investments. On the other hand, SSS holds 710 billion pesos or $12.4 billion. These vast amounts on their own can be classified as funds that are also acting the same way as sovereign wealth funds, slowly growing their money through different investment opportunities. 
In fact, the government is even looking to use this money to fund many of the infrastructure projects the country seeks to build. But of course, the difference between these two and an absolute sovereign wealth fund is that these two's funding comes from the population. These are the pension funds of society, after all. What we are still yet to mention, though, is that these two funds are also participating in the Maharlika Wealth Fund. As GSIS said, it will provide an initial investment of about 125 billion pesos and SSS at about 50 billion pesos with Land Bank. And finally, if the Maharlika Sovereign Wealth Fund does become a reality, or yet another dream, the country should not regret it. Just because it holds many promises, it does not entirely mean it is the sole economic driver of one's country. Many countries worldwide are very developed, but still do not have their own sovereign wealth fund. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.